Welcome to the Personal Book Builder Complete Training for 2016 Update. I'm very excited and we have quite a bit of information to cover tonight. So we have an introduction, that's what we're doing right now. We'll cover real quickly how to locate the Personal Book Builder tool. We'll discuss what is the purpose of the Personal Book Builder tool. Then we'll get into, get into some basic training. We'll introduce you to the tool. Then we'll talk about the building blocks and then we're gonna go through eight templates for building personal books. And you're gonna be able to get those templates with the purchase of the webinar. So I'm very excited with all the templates I've put together to make book building so much easier. We'll briefly talk about book converters. How do we get things, for example, out of Kindle or a PDF file into a Word format that we could then use and put into our Logos program. And then just a few additional resources to learn even more. So this is one jam-packed webinar. So for those of you who are new to the webinar, here's the purpose. First, we're gonna provide training for Logos Bible software. We're gonna provide training so you can study the topic for yourself. Now, in this case, there's really no topic we're studying from a biblical perspective. But when we do cover those topics, we do like to provide biblical insights related to the topic. We always provide a personal book and manual to equip yourself and others. And tonight is no different, so let me go ahead and show you that. As you can see, this is quite a detailed personal book covering a lot of information here. So this will come with the purchase of the webinar. And then also, what's gonna make this webinar quite special is there is the eight templates. So we've got one to create your own Bible, your own to create your own chapter book, a commentary verse by verse, your own devotional, a dictionary, a Bible harmony, a book of illustrations, your own lectionary, even your own sermon. Plus, we have a general book which is freely available and uh, you can get that Faith Life, and you can also, I think I made it available as a handout. You'll see that there too. We're gonna also give you, with the purchase of the webinar, a calendar of dates. So I have a calendar here of all the dates in a year, already done in a format in Excel. So all you have to do is copy and paste into your documents. So all that hard work's been done. We've also created in an Excel spreadsheet quite extensive all the verses of the Bible with the chapters and the verses, all the special milestone codes that you need. So when you're building your own Bible or you need these codes from Genesis to Revelation, it's all been created. Plus we have some special ones for creating special headings of books as well. And that's automatically created for you. So you can see here in the spreadsheet, we've got Bible, Genesis, chapter one heading, chapter two heading, etc. We'll cover this in more detail, but I wanted to let you know that there's a lot more that's gonna come with this webinar than our typical webinars that we do on Bible topics. So very excited to have put those together. First question tonight, is there any way of viewing your personal books through the mobile media? Great question, Paul. Unfortunately, Logos has not made that capability possible. Personal books can only be viewed on a PC or a Mac. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, it's fast paced. The webinars include a lot of information to increase the training value. Tonight will be no different. Some items you're gonna be able to follow along, others you can just watch, so don't worry if you fall behind because all the webinars are recorded and we're gonna edit them for purchase and review. So if you wanna pre-order the webinar, you can do that at learnlogos.com forward slash buy webinar. And you can pre-order this right now. Uh, the special is $4.99. And uh, after two weeks, the price will go up to $7.99. We'll most likely release this webinar by Sunday. Now, for those of you who haven't yet purchased the Logos 6 bundle training, I highly recommend that. You can see we have a bundle for four, five, and six. And the sixth version has over 34 hours of training, 750 videos. It's more in depth than anything you can find out there. What does our schedule look like for 2016? Well, if you go to learnlogos.com forward slash events, you can see that list. The schedule for the upcoming weeks, we're not gonna have another webinar for a month. I've gotta get ready for some seminary classes, so I need some extra time to wrap up my papers and readings. So the next webinar will be Monday, June 13th principles and strategies to study any Bible topic. Then Monday, July 11th, how to study the resurrection. Monday, August 1st, what do the animals in the Bible reveal about God? A fascinating study on the creatures that God has created. And then Monday, August 22nd, how does Paul use the Old Testament? So let's get started with the personal book builder. Let me go ahead and open up our Logos program 
and get ourselves started. So the first thing I want to do is locating the personal book builder tool. Many of you probably already know where it is, but let's just review that for those of you who are new to the tool. So you go to tools on the main menu and you go to personal books. Pretty straightforward. As you can see here, I've got several personal books already created. So very easy to get there, tools, personal books. Now, what is the purpose of the personal book builder? Because if you don't understand that, you might not quite use the tool appropriately and not really understand the full implications and the possibilities of this tool. The primary purpose of the personal book builder is to create a searchable book in Logos Bible software. One of the reasons we love Logos is because it can take our favorite books and we can search on words, topics, uh, key cross-references, and it's all integrated into the Logos system. The personal book builder makes it possible for us to do the same, and it's really become quite a robust tool. So, for example, if we create a commentary, it'll show up in the commentary section in our passage guide. If we create a book of illustrations or sermons, it'll show up in our illustrations and sermons. So this makes it really fun and allows you to take content from your own personal studies, from things you find on the internet, organize that and put it all under one Logos roof. Very, very important. So you can see there we can research, store all your research on a passage or topic. We can create a personal commentary. We can keep track of your sermons. We can create your own devotionals and we can create your own illustrations and store those in a database that we can search inside Logos. So back to the key purpose, it's to create a searchable book in Logos Bible software. For tonight, we're gonna use one particular file. It's called the Basic Training Introduction to the Personal Book Builder. And uh, you have it right now through the handout section. Now this is the first time I've used the handout section with this technology. So hopefully you guys can see that in your menu. Let me go ahead and open up Faith Life and show you where you can download it there as well. So let me bring in the browser. So if you go to faithlife.com and in the search box for finding people or groups, just simply type learnlogos.com. If you put in learnlogos.com, you'll get one choice, learnlogos.com presentation. And then now if you're new to learnlogos.com presentation, you're gonna have to join the group to get access to the content here. Now the last post on there, you'll see it'll say, hi everyone, and then you click show more. And you'll see a link to a document, the personal book, various PB tagging examples. You wanna click that, and hopefully you've got Microsoft Word. Now if you don't, that's okay because you can use a software called LibreOffice. It's a free program, LibreOffice.org. You can download this for free. It will take a little while, it's a pretty big file, but it does have a docx format that is compatible with Word, with Logos. So if you don't have Microsoft Word, download this, and then you'll be able to view the document tonight. So that'll be really cool. Okay, Paul's got a question. He says, John, is personal books back up in Logos Cloud, or is there a way to back up those files personally? I wouldn't want to lose that information because of a crash. Great question, Paul. Let me answer it in two ways. First, a personal book has the raw data file, and that's the docx file. That you definitely want to back up. And I'll mention this later in the webinar, again as a reminder, but I would stick it in a, in a cloud drive, like OneDrive for Microsoft Office or Dropbox or something like that. If you put all your docx personal books there, and I recommend having a, a drive-based uh, cloud. That makes it easier for you to save it and it makes it easier for Logos to find it. And so if you save it there, then your original docx personal book files are totally protected. Now on the other side, once you convert that book over, Logos does have a feature called upload and we're going to cover that later. And that will upload the final personal book to the cloud and that will be available in any Logos that you connect, and that is stored there. So that's a really cool feature. So both of them work really good. You wanna take that two-fold approach. Great question, so hopefully everyone was able to download that personal book document. We'll be looking at that today. Let's go ahead and click on Add Book. And when you click on Add Book, you get the basic information that is associated with your book. So when you create a book, you can put all this metadata with it. 
You can tell the title of it. You can name the author. You can put in a copyright date. You can choose the type of book that you want Logos to categorize. So is this a Bible book or is this a harmony or is this a devotional? You have all those options and you need to be thoughtful when you choose those types. You can also choose languages as well. And then there's an additional add field section. As you can see here, there's five more choices. There's an abbreviated title. There's a publisher and publication date. There's a subject heading, an alternate title, and series title. I recommend using each one of these because it serves, each one of them serves an important purpose. Now you have a book cover over here on the left. And you just click change and navigate to a particular cover. JPEG or PNG file would work just fine. Also at the right, you have a description. So this information can be very helpful. And then we have our add file. And remember with a personal book, you can only use the .docx file format, which is Microsoft Word or the LibreOffice version as well. And those are fully compatible with Logos Bible software. Now, why don't we put all this information? Let me take you back to the PowerPoint and kind of help you understand how this information that we're entering in actually shows up in a personal book. Now, at the bottom, we have that information all typed in here. Then at the top left, we have the citation section, which comes from the book info page. And then over at the right, we have the book cover and additional information from the info page. So let's walk through and see where everything comes from. So if you were to copy and paste content from one of your personal books that you created and paste it into Word, it's going to cite it like it does all the other Logos books. And that citation comes from the information you input. So here's a good example of last name first, last name first. Then we have the title that shows up there. And again, the citation style is determined by you. It might be Turabian, SBL, etc. The series title shows up right here. So if you're creating a commentary series, this will be very important to include the series title. Now you're starting to see why we include all this information. Now I have, like most publishers, they usually put a city, comma, state, they put a colon, and then they put the name of the publisher. So in this case, I put Green Bay, Wisconsin, colon, learn Logos. So that's a very standard format that you'll see with a lot of publishing companies. So that's where that information about the publisher comes from. And then we have the year it was published, the publication date. So you can see that there. Notice that the 2017, which is under my last name, is not the number that shows up here. So be aware the publication date belongs here and it shows up there in the citation. Again, the title, which is again in the book information section is listed here. There's the abbreviated title. That's where that shows up. Then we have the last name, first name. We've covered that one before. That shows up here. And then here's where the description information. So when you've opened up books and you've looked at description, that's the purpose of the description box. The manual, in this case, I chose manual for the book type, shows up here in gray. And the book cover clearly shows up with the book cover. Notice over here, this copyright and series section. These are two additional sections in the book information further down. And so that's where the copyright date shows up. So copyright date versus publication date, two important dates to understand the difference. And there's the series title as well. So that's a lot of information that Logos collects, but as you can see, it's all populating those very important fields so that when you use this book, whether it's for citation or getting additional information, it's gonna look and feel like any other book in the Logos system. Now, if you were to open up my library and be in the grid view, you can see that same information here. Here's the book cover. Here's the book type. Here we have the title, the last name and the first name of the author. There's the subject headings in case you hadn't seen that. The abbreviated title, the alternate title. There's the languages that we had selected. Publication date, there's the publisher the series title. Notice at the far right, the edition is user created. Now, if you don't see all these titles in the grid, let me show you how to do that real quick. So let me go back to Logos. I'm gonna open up the library. And if you go over to the right, you'll see that you have a little triangle here. And if you click it, you have a cover view, which shows all the book covers. You have a title view, which shows you the book cover and some basic title information. The third option is the details view or the grid view. That's where you get all this additional information. Now, 
each column is presented here and if you right click on one of the column titles a menu appears here is where you can click and have additional information appear so you may want to check some of these that are pretty important I'll be recording this video so this would be a good time to like pause the video if you're watching the video and you could see what I have and you could match the same so very important after you click on one of them the menu goes away you have to right click on the column title again and then select the next one so be aware of that now Orpheus has a great question is there a limit to how large a personal book can be I've heard a lot of different numbers. I've been told 20 megabytes is as big as it'll go. Once you start pushing more than 20, you may start having problems compiling the book. So it, that's where having a series can be very strategic, creating smaller books that are joined by a series title so that you call them Volume 1, Volume 2, or if you're doing like Commentary, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. So be thoughtful as you're planning out how you want to organize your information and how much information you're going to have. Because the personal books allows you to include images, you can quickly make a file grow big very fast. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint slide. As I mentioned earlier, don't forget about the user-created edition. So all your personal books will show up in Logos as a user created. So all we gotta do is type in addition and put in colon and put in user and that should allow us to access all the user created books. So there you go. So if you wanna get a list of all your personal books, just type in the column name addition colon and then the word user and you'll get those all listed right there nice and easy and you can even create a collection of these as well which is pretty handy so let's go to the next slide and uh, just a little note here if you do footnotes there again is the format first name and then last name so bibliographies always do last name comma first names but if you're doing a footnote you're going to see the first first name first and then the last name come after that Notice that depending on the format, you may get the publisher in parentheses. So just be aware of some of those subtle differences. Uh, there's the last name, there's the title, there's the series title. By the way, if you're going to be creating personal books and you want to share those with other people, uh, let, me, let me stress this what I mean by share. Let's say you're going to copy and paste from a personal book. I do this for my webinars. I put in the series title as the web page back to the product page. So that way people know where it's coming from. So if you're going to create shareable information and you have a place where this docx can be downloaded, then you want to put that web page in the series title. And that way you can copy and paste from your book and people will know where it's